Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Book Chats, and this is a very messy uh, July TBR that I'm starting to film 11 days into the month. Real great. Uh, anyway, I thought I would show you guys um, the books that I am currently reading in July, and then um, pull my first prompt for Becca's Bookopoly, which technically started Becca's Bookopolathon, which technically started like four hours ago and it was only 48 hours. I'm mostly just going to follow the prompts and use those for the rest of my reading for the rest of the month. I'm definitely not good at this whole 48 hour thing and I also have to do my taxes this weekend. So anyway, oh and there's a little bit of a book haul in here as well. But without further ado, uh, let's do for Becca's Bookopoly. So she has the 2019 board and the 2020 board and I'm going to be doing the first prompt for the 2020 board which is a chance card. So Becca's chance cards are half books that she's really excited about and half books that she's feeling kind of more met about. Mine are not that because most of the books on my shelf are wrapped in wrapping paper right now or they're sequels to books that are wrapped in wrapping paper that I haven't read. So instead what I did is I took each genre I have wrapping paper for and I made a card that says I unwrap a book for that and then I went and picked the smallest book in each of those categories on the shelf and then I picked books that I've already unwrapped with a couple library books thrown in there that I have right now um, that I had back in March when the COVID times started. And so I have put those on these cards and I'm kind of shuffling them now. I've shuffled them several times today and then we'll see if I get someone to unwrap, I'll unwrap it. And if we don't, I'll go with these. The theory being that I'm like, and maybe more motivated or interested in the books that I've unwrapped. Although there's a couple library books that I put in my stack um, that I'm like really do want to get to. Um, I mostly picked the skinniest novels on my shelf. Nonfiction in general is hard for a readathon setting. So my first chance card is. Oh, interesting. Okay, this is one I think there's a high possibility that I will DNF, but we will see. And that is OCD, The Dude and Me, which is already unwrapped off my shelf. I think there's a high possibility I will DNF this, so we'll see. But uh, definitely true to the spirit of these cards. And then the books that I am currently reading in this month, I am listening on audiobook to Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Let me pull it up so you can see. Um, it came in about a week ago, maybe five days, and I've been listening to it on and off since then. I also have a bunch of podcasts I've been listening to, so that's kind of here and there. Uh, and then I am currently reading in hardback, Strange and Ever After by Susan Dennard. This is the book that uh, was supposed to be my unread shelf book last month, but I just only read four books, dragged myself through many of them. It just was not a great reading month for me. I had a lot going on. There was a lot going on in the world. And I don't necessarily have less going on now, but I just have, I'm regulating my emotions better maybe, or my time. But yeah, so that's, uh, I am uh, just under halfway, so like 40% into this, and I will finally have finished the series, which I have owned this book since the day it was released. I pre-ordered it. So you just tell you how far behind I am. Now for the Unread Shelf Challenge this month, I was supposed to have my social media people choose a book for me. So I picked four books and had a poll on Twitter and 14 people voted. And I'm going to show you the four books that I gave and then tell you which one won. Um, I chose two nonfiction books and two fiction books because I'm trying to get more nonfiction back into my reading. Um, so I had The Hollywood Economist. Um, and then my other nonfiction people to choose from was Under the Banner of Heaven by John Krakauer. This one almost won, but did not. Uh, and then the two fiction books that I had as options were uh, Emperor of the Eight Islands, um, which I got at BEA years ago when it was in Chicago and still haven't read. So that will be really interesting. But that is not the one that won. The one that won is one that I've been telling myself for months that I'm going to read. So Finally, I'm going to read it and that, or at least attempt it. And that is Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. I've heard so many good things about this book and then I just get like intimidated and panic and don't read it. So if I can find some way to also work this into the prompts as Becca's book up a lot, 
As Becca's book Apoliathon continues, I will, but we'll see. So uh, that and Stranger Never After, and then Know My Name is Chanel Miller, and then I already have like binge read two romance novels this month, so we'll see like what goes on there. I didn't really like them a ton though. Oh, I guess I've binge read three this month, and I liked one, and the other two I didn't. One of them I absolutely despised, and then the other one I just like I don't know how I feel about it, so I think I might still be in a weird funk. But I do want to do a quick unboxing of some books that I had um, ordered. So technically with the Unread Shelf Challenge, every other month is supposed to be a month that you are in a buying and borrowing um, van. And it's supposed to be the odd numbered months, which means it would be fine for me to buy books in June, except I didn't realize January in January that that was part of the challenge. So I didn't follow it in January. And so I have just been doing every even number of months. So I was not supposed to find any books in June. But then there was both like the Blackout, the New York Times list challenge kind of. And I also kind of angrily ordered some books. So all of these are books by black authors. And then two I actually have not picked up yet. Here are the books that I ordered. Three of them. There's five total. When the other two come in, I will probably put a poll up, which might be about the time that this is actually posted. We'll see. And uh, that poll will um, be for you guys to vote on which one I read this month. But I do intend to read one of these each month until I run out of them. So uh, that is what's happening. So this, these first two I ordered from the closest black owned bookstore, which is in Chicago on bookshop.org. Um, and I do know what they are, but I don't know which one is in which package. So I'm opening this box. Oh, so I think I know this one is. So, so this is the one that is um, a novel. It is When the Stars Lead You by Ronnie Davis. I've heard very good things about this book, and I followed Ronnie for years on Twitter, and it was time for me to just buy it. Um, it looks beautiful. I'm actually really excited to get to this because I have been feeling this kind of kind of contemporary-ish book and I have not been unwrapping them off of my shelves and so yes excited about that um, which means I know I do know what this one is then. I guess I can just open <laughs> this end and then slide it out. That would make for something more dramatic then. So this is Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. When I was ordering um, When the Stars Lead to You, I was looking at potentially reading some other books. And this was one that I think will give a really good angle on kind of feminism and how it has um, not always highlighted every woman, woman and kind of the things that need to be remembered when you're trying to be more intersectional in your feminism so that... Is, I hope what I'll get out of this, and I think it'll be a very interesting read. I mean, I bought these books, so I think they'll all be great reads. And then the third one is actually the first one that I ordered. I ordered it from a local bookstore that I hadn't ordered from before. It's kind of a newer bookstore, um, and so I kind of wanted to try them out and see what they were like, and it was back ordered, so it took a little bit, but it wasn't too bad to get it. Um, and so it's for, called The Irreverent Bookworm. Um, and this is a book that Mari, so my name is Mari Nez, uh, actually recommended. Um, had a really great post about it, and then I saw it recommended by Brene Brown as well, and I was like, okay, definitely have to check it out. And that is I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. There's actually a little, like, bookmark in here and a sticker. I do like the sticker. It's cute. I will put up a vote for those once I go pick up the last two books um, that I ordered and uh, get those all in line. The other two books that I ordered are The Color of Compromise, which is about the ways that the white church in America has been complicit in and often made choices that continue to sustain like slavery throughout history. I also ordered Me and White Supremacy. I had intended to get it before July 1st, so I could participate in the read-along that Kathy is hosting on Twitter, 
So I ordered that from Subtext Books, which is a local St. Paul bookstore, way back in like mid June, but it has been back ordered forever because everyone has been ordering it and getting it and they had to do a whole new printing run. And I let them know when I ordered it, like, don't worry about it. I would ideally like to have it before July 1st, but otherwise don't worry about it. So that just came in and I just got the email about it like two days ago, basically. And so I was like, oh, I need to go get that. In um, June, Alex Vitale and his publisher were also giving away free ebook copies of The End of Policing. So I did acquire one of those on my Kindle. But anyway, uh, that is all of that messiness. Oh, and let me hold up books that I know I'm going to be attempting this month. Um, I am really hoping to finish this. This one I will for sure be making an attempt and hopefully I'll like. And then this one, I think I might DNF, but we'll see. So these I am reading this month. Um, one of these that you guys vote on, I will be reading this month or the two that are not in yet. And then, um, no, my name by Chanel Miller. So that's what I'm reading in July. What are you reading? Are you participating in any readathons? Let me know down below. And it is about, I think, 10 a.m. Central, maybe between 10 and 11 Central. And we are getting ready to buy to the farmer's market. I have not finished any books yet for the readathon. I think I will either DNF. I started, I was going to DNF after Hatred of the, and then I started skimming. So I don't know if I'm going to finish skimming or just actually stop reading the first book. But the second prompt for the 2020 board is a book picked by like the audience. And I already had my Twitter followers pick a book for me to read this month for the unread shelf challenge. So I will be picking up Instellary Justice at some point today, but I have a lot of other things on my plate. So I'm biking. Okay, we got home from the farmer's market about 15 minutes ago. As always, I'm terrible at vlogging, so I didn't take any footage of the farmer's market. It's too busy looking at all the things we were thinking about buying, but I'm gonna go through, oh, here, Nan, your leftover cash. Oh, wait, did I already give it to you? <laughs> I hope I already gave it to you. Um, so we got this giant amount of dill for pickling, because we've been making refrigerator pickles. I will put a link to the recipe down below because it's amazing and they're wonderful. And then we got this huge bunch of basil that I'm about to go put in water so it doesn't get, go bad fast. So I can finally make all those dishes that want fresh basil that I've been wanting to, but if you buy it in a grocery store, it's so expensive. We got these delicious snap peas that I'm just gonna eat well. That's really good. You're good, man. This is what we have to do because we waited too late to sign up for a CSA this year. So now we're just going to go to the farmer's market. And then we got this lovely bunch of mint. It smells so good. I'm going to break some off and put it in some water for me. And we got this lovely bunch of kale. Uh, and then my brother was kind enough to bike home. My sister biked home the dill and it was great. And it was pretty great. Um, my brother biked home this kombucha for us. Um, we got it because it tastes pretty good and it has no added sugar and we're on this like no added sugar thing for like five more days. So we're like, yeah, kombucha. Um, so that's everything we got at the farmer's market. And then next week we're definitely gonna go back and get all of the things with sugar in them. So it'll be great. And also a eucalyptus because by the time we went back to get the eucalyptus, they'd sold out, but the guys said he'd have them next week too. So I did all that. I'm gonna put it away. I'm gonna make myself a mint drink. And then I'll probably read a little bit more, but I also have to go pick up some books from a bookstore that I ordered them from and go pick up some uh, popcorn from a local theater. So It's also the dishwasher is so gross I had to clean it day. So I'm cleaning the dishwasher. So I ran it while we were out with vinegar and now I'm gonna add baking soda and run it again. I lied about reading. I remembered that my friend is having a PowerPoint party today for her birthday and I haven't made my PowerPoint for it yet. So I'm gonna make my PowerPoint for that. And then I'm gonna join the party. All right, it is like 6.30. I have not done any reading. I uh, have not even showered after biking, so I smell awful. But I did that socially distanced birthday PowerPoint party for my friend, and it was really fun. I took a couple of hours, it was great. I learned that I am 100 miles above magma, and, um, now I'm going to run out and get some popcorn at this local movie theater that we want to support uh, and then come back and take a shower and hopefully do some reading. Um, so that is the scoop. I just saw the third roll dropped and luckily it is to read a book that was a gift. And I do have um, paper, like paper wrapping on my 
shelves that indicates a book was a gift. So I am going to um, try to get a start on Insular Justice, but after I finish that, I'll unwrap one of those. It's not going to happen this weekend, obviously. Uh, it was really great because the presentation I gave for the party was a video idea I've had for a while, so it was nice to kind of do a run through and practice. That so was really good. So now I got to get in the car, head to a bank to get cash, and then get popcorn. It's like 8 30 ish p.m. and I am making dinner. Tonight's dinner is Greek chicken power bowls, which of course anytime it's like a bowl, it takes a lot more effort. So I try to only do these on weekends. I have chicken cooking on the stove. I have my um, chickpeas cooking in my Instant Pot and then I'm gonna roast them afterwards. So that'll be a little effort. I have my tomato salad. I have my quinoa. I have my cucumber salad. And then in the fridge, I have feta cheese and also um, a sauce that I made to go on top of it all. And obviously I'm running the dishwasher. So I'm gonna get some dishes cleaned um, and then maybe read a little bit while I wait for these uh, chickpeas to finish and keep an eye on this chicken. Bye. It is Sunday, July 12th, I think. Yes, 12th. And I uh, did not get any more reading of my Bag's Bookopoly TBR done last night, yesterday, Saturday. So I basically did no reading. <laughs> but while I was cooking, I listened to a lot of Know Your Name by Chanel Miller on audiobook. God bless audiobooks. And so that was good, at least. And I woke up and realized that even though I, so I had kind of decided I would probably DNF OCD the Dude Me when I went to bed on Friday. And then, uh... When I woke up on Saturday, I decided I like skimmed a little bit and then I was skimming and I was like, well, maybe I'll finish it by skimming. And then I woke up this morning and I was like, I have no desire to read more of that book. There's nothing about that book that interests me. The representation is supposed to be extremely terrible. So I'm just going to DNF that one just really confidently. And I am not going to, um, I'm going to recycle it. I'm not going to let that one pass into someone else's hands. And uh, I think that the author is trying to show us that the main character is an unreliable narrative in some so small, subtle ways. But uh, I just don't think the way it's handled in the book works. But, you know, I didn't finish it. So whatever. I don't like generally the character has said some things that are just really not OK. And they're not being very well challenged in the first half of the book two-thirds of the book and like I don't know it's it's just not very interesting um anyway the point being uh, means that today at some point I will start ancillary justice um and then after that is done the next prompt that came up was a gifted book so I have two gifted books wrapped on my shelf and I have one that I already singled out is slightly smaller than the other so when I get when I finish ancillary justice I'll unwrap that one and I'll film that because I home all my unwrap things, but that probably will not go into this video because I want to get this one up before then. We'll see. Oh, and then the fourth prompt, the fourth role came up, and the fourth role is to read either a contemporary or a romance on the 2020 board, which has just been treating me very well. The 2019 board, no way, but the 2020 board, yes. Uh, and that's great because I have already binged a couple romances this month, and I know I can get through others easily, and I also have um, a contemporary that I just purchased that I'm really interested in. So I'm either going to read, I'm going to say The King's Man by Elizabeth Kingston, which is a romance I've had on my shelves from the library for a couple months now. Um, or I'm going to read When the Stars Lead to You by Ronnie Davis. Or, barring those two, um, we'll see if I end up picking something up as an ebook. Anyway, that is the scoop. Okay, it is no longer the 48 hours of the Becca's book Bookopolathon, but I did finish Ancillary Justice last night slash early this morning. So the next prompt was to um, read a book that was gifted to you. And I have exactly two books that were gifted to me on my shelves. And this one is the slightly thinner of the two. So I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to unwrap this and then we're about to go uh, up north for the weekend. So I'll bring this with me. I will bring a romance with me and I will bring my Kindle with me because it's never a problem to have your Kindle, right? So let's see. Oof. Let's see what I'm going Of the two books that are on my shelf, I know what both of them are. And one I'm definitely more excited about than the other one. So this one is the one. I, it's just a wild card is what it is. So this is like a mystery thriller. Um, 
that was gifted to me by my friend Bethany. Uh, and she knows the author, but mystery thriller is not a genre I read very often. So we will see. I will read this um, hopefully before the end of the month. Bye. It is 2.40 on the last Saturday in July. We are done biking now. We're back from biking. Um, so I am going to make myself a like lunch snack. We're having a really early dinner. So we're not supposed to eat like a whole lunch. And then I'm probably going to change into something nicer. And by nicer, I mean not fall off my bike sweat and like chill and read some books. So I, on the bike trail, only ended up rereading like the 2% of the end of policing that I'd already read. Um, but it was good because then my family saw me and then I was like, well, I can't actually fall behind. So now that they've caught up to me after biking like twice as long as me, um, I bike, I enjoy biking. I just don't enjoy biking at the same level as my family does. I'm also like much more out of shape than they are. Um, so they gave me the option to just stay home and read all day, but I was like, no, I should go out and bike and be part of the family. But I also like know my limits. So I knew that when I got to the Mississippi, I was like, nope, I'm turning around. <laughs> um, anyway. Our dog has just spotted the ducks on the dock. So we're gonna see what she does. Anyway, I um, finished Black Flowers, White Lies yesterday. It was actually okay. I expected not to like it and it was okay. I had a couple kind of specific things I didn't love about it, but I'm not really a mystery thriller person and especially mystery thrillers in the YA area are really hard to pull off. So I don't really know if like my criticisms are criticisms someone who reads the genre more regularly would have. Anyway, that means I'm on to the final prompt from the Becca's Book Lothaliathon, which is to read a contemporary or a romance. So I brought uh, Elizabeth Kingston's The King's Man um, up with me, and that is my plan to start that. Um, I also do have uh, I'm Still Here by Austin Channing Brown in my luggage, so I can switch to that if I need to, or, you know, my Kindle and all the books on that. Anyway, mostly it's just another, be it's just another beautiful day to hang out by the lake and read books. So I made the solo pie recipe from the most recent Bon Appetit magazine. It is in the freezer and in about 20 minutes, I'm going to go in and add the jam on top and then it has to cool for another seven and a half hours. Freeze. It has to freeze for another seven and a half hours. Um, so I'm just hanging out. I put a towel down. I'm in like view of the lake um, and I'm just going to hang and read and chill outside. So I've got my sunscreen to reapply. I already applied it all all the places got my hydration pack so that's the scoop. It is Wednesday morning on the last Wednesday in July whatever that date is and I stayed up until 1 a.m. yesterday today this morning um, to finish The King's Man by Elizabeth Kingston. I have really mixed feelings about this so I came upon this series which I believe is a self-published historical romance series. I mean it is a historical romance series. I believe it's self-published because the third book in the trilogy, romance trilogy, so, you know, loosely connected, was on NPR's 2019 best books list. And I thought that was very intriguing. I picked it up. I really liked it. And I waited for these from the library as well. I have the second one as well. And I figured I would read it. And it was just very weird because the hero is extremely unlikable. And I'm not sure I ever actually, like, decided to like the hero and so then I'm just really conflicted reading it I don't know I might do a full review what of this whole trilogy when I finish it we'll see because it's interesting but com complicated and I really like the writing I like Elizabeth Kingston writes in a very interesting way and she's covering a historical period that's not super common in a way that has a lot of detail but is not like boringly detailed if that makes sense um but the I yeah. I accidentally dropped it. <laughs> anyway, the hero in that book is just weird. Um, and then uh, that means that I have finished all four of my books that were chosen during the Becca's book Apoliathon, which, you know, was for, supposed to be 48 hours and I have stretched it to the end of the month. <laughs> 
Uh, and so the next thing I have on my list to read is I'm Still Here by Austin Channing Brown, which is in my backpack. But I also might pick up the second book in that series and do like a series review. And I also uh, am listening to The Man's Search for Meaning on audiobook. And so I have a couple other books that I'm going to go for. And I have to get back to work today. Vacation is over. So mostly what I'm going to do is get dressed and go to work. <laughs> Okay, I'm preparing to go to the library for the first time since they shut down in March. Um, and actually, I'm going to a different library than I used to because since I've been working from home, I used to go to the library that was my work. But since I've been working from home, I'm going to go to the library that's actually by my home. So I have to go on my lunch break because it's only open during like normal daytime hours. I mean, I just work later than I should. So... I just put the three books that I have to return. There's a fourth book. Someone in my family thinks they might read it. So three books that I have to return and a DVD that I'm going to return in my knapsack thing. And then I'm going to pull a CD out of my car and then I'm going to walk to the library. Walk to the library on my lunch break. I still have my mask on. It's probably bad audio. And I decided to pick up some drinks at the tea bar on the way home. Hi, this is Caitlin from September, and apparently I never actually filmed like a closer to my July um, vlog TBR book haul thing. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to close it out here and say thanks for watching this extremely messy video that is like three months late. I appreciate all of you. Bye. <laughs>